Today, we're gonna explore a decision of a young woman who decides to have her upper eyelid surgery done for cosmetic reasons. And we're gonna go through her experience with her, and I'm gonna make comments along the way on whether or not her response and reaction is, is uh, normal or, or expected. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Joel Kopelman. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon. I'm an eyelid specialist. And please subscribe to my channel. And let's get started. So what we can see here is that the surgeon marked out what tissue he's going to remove on her upper eyelid. And it is critical that the surgeon be very precise about the measurements on the upper lid in terms of how much tissue is going to be removed in order to get a symmetric final appearance. So he's done a good job. I can see that his markings are relatively symmetrical. They have to be very precise because whatever he marks out now is going to be a guide for where he's gonna make his incisions and it will have an impact on the final result. So when I perform upper eyelid surgery, I use a caliper, which is a measuring device, and I can measure very specifically the distance between the eyelid crease and the amount of tissue that's going to be removed on both sides in different, in different points along the eyelid in order to get as symmetric a result as I can possibly achieve. Just freehanding it and doing it like this you may not end up with a symmetric result. And therefore, this is a very precise procedure, it takes time to do it. And if the surgeon is rushed or thinks it's, it's irrelevant, I disagree with that approach. I think it is very important that they take their time to measure out exactly how much tissue they plan to remove. <music> What we see here in this photograph is it after he's removed the tissue in the upper eyelid it looks like there's been what I call a 50-50 split between the uh, eyebrow from the eye, lower eyebrow to the eyelashes so there's a 50-50 split so he split the dimensions of the upper lid which is can look very nice on many patients but it doesn't really give them a truly natural appearance her natural appearance of course is what she looked like before surgery, where the dimensions were two thirds, one third, and now she has a 50 50 dimension between the upper eyelid uh, subbrow area and the eyelid crease. <music> Dr. Lorino applies what are called stereo strips on the upper lid. I, I never do that, I don't think it's actually necessary. I don't think it adds anything. I don't think it adds that much pressure to the upper eyelid to prevent swelling. Uh, he may be doing that to, to uh, prevent swelling. It can cause problems because that those stereo strips can get loose and kind of scratch your cornea. So I wouldn't do that. That's not part of my routine. This is the day after my surgery. He may be applying those stereo strips so the patient doesn't get worried about what the sutures look like, the stitches look like after surgery. And so um, that may be one reason he's putting the stereo strips on there to actually camouflage the incision so people don't get worried about what the incision looks like. But as far as a therapeutically, I don't think it adds anything to the uh, final result. This is how it looks like. I also got lip fillers, so my lips are very swollen. Oh my god, guys. It's crazy. So, Danica is concerned about the way she looks immediately following surgery. Of course, when you undergo surgery, you're going to always have some bruising. Uh, you're going to have some possible bruising and swelling and and your anatomy is gonna look distorted, uh, certainly initially, and that's a normal response to any surgery. So 
Um, she's concerned about that. She's uh, looking in the mirror. She's worried. But this is nothing to really worry about. This is a normal evolution of surgery. I actually love the shape of my lips. Dr. Jana really did a great job shaping it. And it's still very swollen. It's gonna subside and I'm gonna show you a closer look as to how my eyes look now. It's starting to bruise. So this is how I look today and I will show you how I will look tomorrow. But also, um, the stitch removal for upper blepharoplasty is only five days, so I was surprised about that. I typically remove uh, sutures on the upper eyelid like this physician, this surgeon has done between five and seven days following surgery. And usually if you remove the sutures between five and seven days, you don't see the suture tracks uh, where the sutures have been um, passed through the skin. Some people use what's called subcuticular stitch below the skin. I prefer using a suture that's non-absorbable, that doesn't cause a skin reaction, which is like nylon or proline, versus uh, a suture like uh, chromic, which can cause uh, a reaction at the point where the sutures are passed through the skin. So I use non-reactive sutures, but the flip side of that is that I have to remove those sutures I don't let them absorb by themselves because I think the absorbable sutures can leave um, more tra uh, suture tracks and potentially more scarring than uh, non-absorbable sutures which do have to be removed. And I'm actually happy that it's so much faster than the rhino. So healing of the eyelid and swelling of the eyelid occurs much more rapidly than rhinoplasty. She's referring to her nose. Rhinoplasty surgery really takes, believe it or not, up to a year before everything, all the swelling and uh, subsides. So it takes a very long time to heal and for, for things to resolve when you have a nose job versus an eyelid procedure, which is very rapid. Usually within 10 days to two weeks, you're 90% healed, and um, and then a after that, there may be a little swelling that may uh, hang around, but it's, within a month, you're usually completely healed up, the bruises have resolved, and you're more or less on your way to uh, complete healing. Yes, the incisions may take longer to uh, disappear, but in general, uh, you're healing much more quickly than you, you, you would with a rhinoplasty. So I'm going to have my stitches removed in four days. Hi guys, it's been two days since my surgery. And I think the swelling became worse if you look closely. She's concerned about swelling that, that progressed after two days. I think that's nothing to worry about. This is normal. I think she looks great. At, she's progressing very well at the two-day mark and certainly nothing to worry about in terms of uh, where she'll end up. But that's okay. I think the swelling only lasts uh, three to four days. Hopefully that's true for me because on the fifth day, we're going to have the stitches removed. But I can already see the shape of my eyes. And I think Dr. Charles did a really great job. So I'm super excited to see the outcome. And for the swelling, I am still taking Arnica pellets. That's five pellets sublingual. So some surgeons do recommend taking Arnica uh, which is a homeopathic medication to reduce swelling. Uh, there's no real good studies to prove that Arnica is helpful in terms of ultimately accelerating the resolution of swelling. I typically do not give Arnica unless the patient specifically requests it. Done three times a day. And if you also look at my lips, there are bruising from the lip fillers, but looking at the shape, I really love it. We still have a couple of days before we remove the stitches, so I'll update you guys. 
This is the third day after surgery. I just took a bath and I took off the tape. And we can now see the stitches better. I still can't imagine how it would look like without the stitches, so I guess we'll have to wait. But the bruises are still there, but they're starting to fade. And I actually feel so much better now. I feel great. My lips look better also. So I think her eyes are again progressing at day three in an excellent direction. She has minimal bruising, minimal swelling, and she's she's coming along and also, as expected. Still, there are still bruises, but they're looking really good. So I guess we'll just have to wait until Monday to see how it would look without the stitches. But see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, it's the fourth day after surgery and I just noticed that after I moved the tape, it's a bit painful when I look straight because the stitches are gonna get pinched between my skin. So I have to look down like this. There's been yellow discoloration around my eyes. So Bruising on the lower lid uh, from upper eyelid surgery is a normal event because gravity uh, allows some of the blood that's below the skin to descend downward. And uh, so bruising on the lower lid is a normal occurrence after upper eyelid surgery. It's nothing to worry about that's all going to resolve. And it'll, again, it will probably take a week or so. But after the fourth day, I typically ask the patient, or I should say, actually after the third day, I will tell the patient to use warm compresses on their lower lid, and that will dilate their blood vessels and allow uh, faster resorption of any bruising that may be present. Overall, I am doing fine. And we're gonna have the stitches removed tomorrow. And they're looking really good. So, you'll see tomorrow. What I think you should notice is that the inner corners of her eyes look a little pulled and stretched. That can sometimes create some anxiety for the patient because you may feel like, oh, I'm getting a, a scar that's diagonal in that location. Well, the pre-surgical uh, markings show that the surgeon did not go too far towards the inner aspect of her eyelid, he remained conservative, conservatively outside that area. And what we're seeing is really just swelling. So that swelling is all gonna dissipate and she has nothing to worry about. Right now, of course, it looks like there's kind of a downward pull to the inner corners of her uh, eyelids. <laughs> And following removal of her sutures, her eyelid creases look appear very symmetric and, uh, and look like there's no sign of any infection or any uh, uh, discharge from the uh, incisions themselves. The incisions are not healed completely yet but uh, it looks like she's progressing in the right direction. I haven't washed my face yet, but the stitches are now removed. I'm just gonna apply hot compress right now. So the surgeon reapplied those steri strips over those areas because some of those, in the incision itself did, did not look like it was firmly uh, healing. So he's trying to support that wound with some what's called steri strips, which are those little white uh, strips on her upper lids. And sometimes I use those myself in the outer corners of the eye where the skin is thicker. And um, I sometimes leave them on for a couple more days after the sutures have been removed, just to ensure that they have good, there's a good adhesion between the uh, incision itself. And so it's just like a, a little bit more security that everything is going to heal properly. I'm 
So I took this video about a week after my upper blepharoplasty and this is just a visual as to how it looked that time. As you can see, it's still very swollen. So she shows a video one week after surgery. Her eyes look uh, brighter because she now has a fuller upper eyelid crease. Her eyes look a little rounder and um, she looks a little brighter and cheerier than I would say. That's what, and I think she's pleased with the outcome so far. I'm going back to Alpha Advanced to get my PDT treatment or photodynamic light therapy. PDT helps with the swelling and the healing after surgery. Hey guys, it's been a few weeks since I was able to film a video for this vlog because the month of March was extremely busy for me. But um, this is the latest update on my eyes and also for my nose. It's been over 5 weeks since my upper blepharoplasty and over 11 weeks since my rhinoplasty. So she's out 5 weeks here and she looks like she's healing very well. Her upper lid creases look symmetric. Uh, she looks different, obviously, than she looked before surgery. Uh, I think she looks great. Uh, I do think that her lower eyelids are an aesthetic issue, which of course she didn't address at the time of surgery. I do think she's uh, lacking volume on the lower lid down here, and that could be remedied uh, either with uh, a fat injection from uh, obtained from her belly or from her hip uh, and actually injected into the lower lid to fill in those depressions or using something like a filler, a hyaluronic acid filler like Restylane which can uh, fill in those, uh, those uh, grooves down here because she that's making her look a little tired now. Now she's had an operation on the upper eyelid, we're kind of refocusing our attention on other areas of her eyelids and the lower lids are actually now accentuated in terms of what she uh, started out with. So um, in order to get a complete improvement around her eyes, let's say, I would say she needs a filler in the lower eyelid as well. A closer look on my eyes. So the scar it's still obviously very visible because it's only been five weeks and it takes around two to three months for it to completely settle. If you look here, the scar on this inner corner is really visible if you look closer. That scar after five weeks, uh, say even, even possibly after four weeks, I would start injecting uh, either um, something like Canelon, which is a steroid, and or what's called 5-FU, which is 5-fluorouracil, five five which is used off-label for injecting into scars. And sometimes that will uh, accelerate the re resolution of scarring or prevent scarring from happening. On her right eye, it looks like she's healing very well. On her left eye, there looks like a little band or a little scarring going on there, and that may improve with injections. But from afar, it's not that obvious. Then again, it takes up to three months for the scars to settle and for the swelling to be completely gone, I think. That's true. It does take several months before all scarring dissipates if you do nothing. Uh, if you inject them early, uh, you can probably uh, accelerate the resolution of scarring. I hope this uh, analysis of Danica's surgery was of use to those people who are thinking about having eyelid surgery. And uh, it, I hope I allay their fears and their anxiety in terms of swelling and, and bruising because those things are certainly normal uh, occurrences after surgery, nothing to worry about. And I think that uh, overall she's gotten a very good result and I think she's pleased and happy and that's really what we're aiming for. We're aiming for happy patients who are content with the decisions they make. And these are important decisions and decisions they'll live with for many years to come.
So if you have any questions about the, the video or what blepharoplasty can achieve or any questions about what to expect from a blepharoplasty, please leave them below. I'm happy to answer your questions. Please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video.